Hello guys and you're welcome and today what we're going to do is to use a different technique or method to create rocks. So let's go to file and let's create a new substance graph. I'll just go to new and click on substance graph and I'll just call this rocks underscore new and just hit OK. I'll just leave everything at the default and now we can actually see our graph window. So quick setup. What I like doing is to increase the intensity of the normal. So I'll just set that to say nine. And I'll also change this ambient occlusion. Instead of using a uniform color, I'll just pass in the ambient occlusion. So I'll hit the space bar and I'll search for, I'll just type in AO and I'll drop in the HBAO. That's the horizon based ambient occlusion and just paste that in here. Also what I like doing is to use a blur node to connect to the normal to the ambient occlusion and the height. So let's quickly add in a blur node. So I'll just click on blur and I'll set the intensity to zero. I'll just drag this slider down. And what I'll do next is to pass this into the normal. We notice this is red is because it needs a grayscale value. So I'll just hold control D after clicking on the uniform color to create a variation. And I'll just click on grayscale to make that black and white and just drag that in as an input. So it says grayscale. So good. So we've set that to grayscale. So now I can pass this into the ambient occlusion and also the height. So basically when we start creating our nodes, we're just going to pass everything into this blur and we're good to go. And also for our initial setup, what I like to do is to set the materials. So I'll switch here to metallic roughness, tessellation and displacement. I'll just give it a few seconds to load and what I'll do is to just set the, uh, I'll just drag this so we can see this larger. I'll increase the tessellation factor to uh, let's say 7 and I'll just drag the scale just a little bit. We can always change this anytime we want. So let's begin our basic rock creation. So I'll hit the space bar and I'll search for the cube 3D and I'll just drop in that cube 3D like so. And what I'll do is just click on this and just rotate this anywhere. And we can also set the rotation here by going to the orientation offset. So here I'll just leave it at 0.3 and 0.3. And for our size Y, I'll just bump lower this up a little bit. For our size Z, down a little bit like so. Just have variations of this shape. And we can turn this again into any angle we want. That's totally fine. So next what I'm going to do is to pass this into a tile generator. So I'll just go to the output of the cube 3D and then search for a tile generator. I'm we'll just click on that. Now it's going to come in with a lot of values for the X and Y as 10, 10. I'll just set that to one just to have only a single value for the uh, tile generator and also for the pattern. So let's just go ahead and open up the pattern category. I'm going to click this and set it to image input. So it's getting the input from our image right here. So I'll just rotate this. And also instead of setting this into our background, I'm going to set it into the pattern input. To do that, I'll just hold shift, click and just drag this and drop this into the tile generator or pattern input. And also for our rotation random, let's just drag this so we can have multiple random rotations when we start plugging this. So the next thing I'm going to do is to use a HQ grayscale to make these edges a bit smoother because right now they look very angular. So I'll just drag an output and then I'll just look for my blur HQ grayscale and I'll just hold on Control and D just to duplicate that. And I'll cut this connection by selecting this line and pressing delete. So what I'll do is just pass this into our blur HQ grayscale and we can see it's kind of like ghosted. And I think the intensity is okay for this. So let's look at this one for our tile generator. And let's go ahead, since we have that, let's just lower this one. I'll just use a value of like three. So we can see the difference. Like this is more intense. This is less intense like so, and it's actually spinning. So uh, I'll just zoom out and I'll drag this and just drag this to the left. So we have a little bit more space to work right here. So what I'm going to do next is to use a cells one noise and then blur out that output with that cells one because the cells one is a good node that allows us to create, you know, patterns that look rocky. So I hit the space bar 
and I'll search for cells, drop in the cells one, and what I'll do is just turn down the scale. I'll use a value of C4 just to make it super large. The higher you have the scale, the smaller the spaces between the elements, right? So that's basically how that works. I'll pass this into a blur HQ grayscale. So I'll go over here, I'll search for a blur, and I'll just pass in our cells into our blur HQ grayscale so we can see the regular cells. And we're just blurring out those uh, edges. For intensity, I don't want this to be too intense, so we'll just set this to 1.5. So it's it's there, but it's slight. So this is the original, and this is it right here. It's there, but it's super uh, light. So what I'm going to do next is to blend in our two blurs, these two. We're just going to blend them together. So I'll hit the space, and I'll search for my blend node. I could easily just have clicked here to bring in the blend node. And what I'll do is just take these two and just drag them over here. And let's drop in our blend node right here. So I'll take this and pass this into my foreground. Take this and pass it into the background. And for my mode, let me just try max. Uh, I don't like that. I'll switch over to min darken, and I kind of like the way min darken works because it's like kind of cutting out uh, this edge. And I think I can pass in the auto levels now just to make this more better. So I'll just do search for auto levels. I can see the auto levels is brightening this up, but let let me blend these two, and then before I pass that to the auto levels, so I'll select this and then hit the blend node. So you can actually see we have the blend connected right here. And I'll pass in our Blur HQ Grayscale from the top. And what I'm going to do is to change the mode of this blend so that we can actually blend these two. So here I'll try Multiply. Makes this kind of dark. Well, let's try Subtract. And let's just drag down the Opacity. So we can bring in some of that shape. So we can actually see by setting the opacity, let's say to, uh, I'll just leave it at 3.3, because 3.3 3 isn't a, uh, not a bad value for this. And if we click on the auto levels, it actually brightens this up and then gives us a good range between our 0, 1 value so we can rearrange those colors. So what we're going to do next is to add more, uh, begin to add details to this, because you can see our, our rock is kind of like uh, just there. You know, it's slightly sharp and a bit blurred around the edge and we have our auto levels. Let's go ahead and add more uh, details to this. So let's add another uh, a blur HQ grayscale. So I'll just go to output and just drag this in here. I'll just do a blur HQ grayscale like so. And next I'm just going to bring in a noise. So I'll just go over here. And I think rather than use a blur HQ grayscale, I think I'll use the slow blur because the slow blur has an input for intensity and I'll use a noise for that intensity. I'll just show you what I mean. So I'll just go for my uh, slope blur grayscale. And then for the slope, I uh, can do a, uh, okay, good. We can use a clouds one. So this is the intensity input for our slope blur. And then I'll just hold shift and pass this here. And we can see this is super, uh, super, super strong. I'll set the samples to 32 samples. It's still very strong. And it's strong because my intensity needs to be dropped. I'll set this to say two. And this is still, uh, this is still super large. Let's try point to five. So we can actually see what's happening. We can see some of that detail. I'll leave it at point two five for the uh, slope. Let's go ahead and look at the uh, mode. I'll set this to min just to, you know, pull it down a little bit. And what I'm going to do next, we can actually use our transform grayscale, but I'll just leave it at this uh, value. So next, let's go ahead and add a little bit more details to this. So I'll just go ahead and delete my slope blur. 
And over here, I'll create another uh, slope blur just to kill that. So I'll do a slope blur grayscale. And then for my intensity input, I can use the same intensity input and just drag this down. I'll try 0 0.025. And then for our samples, I'll just I'll give it a very high, uh, high sample. And I think at this point, if we want, we can actually call this uh, call this super done. But what I want to do is to add, you know, more uh, micro details to this. And basically, what I'm going to do is just use a blend node, like so. And then here, I'll just add in a uh, noise. So let's search for clouds one. And I'll just pass in that clouds one just to add some noise on the surface of this. And I'll set my blend mode to subtract. And then let's drag in the opacity, very low opacity, like so. I'm clicking on this, I'm not seeing anything. So I'll just drag the opacity. Now, this is the very high opacity, and this is the low opacity. I'll just leave it at 0 0.06 or 0 0.05. I think that's not a bad value. And then I'll add a slope blur. So I'll do a slope. Very simple nodes with multiple inputs and then we keep blurring them. Basically that's what we're doing down here. I'll turn up the samples to 32. And then for intensity, I'll set it to 0 0.025 for the intensity. And then the I'll use the same clouds or we can use a different noise if we want as the value that is going to change this intensity. And then for our mode, let's try min. So if we want more of that, we can always raise up the intensity and see how that's going. But I'll just leave it at 0.2. And what we can do is to just drag this and impute this into our output so we can see what we're working with. So I'll just uh, drag this down here and then plug in the input to the blur. We can just zoom in and see what we have here. So if at any point we need to turn down the intensity, I can always go back and check out any of our slope blurs where the values might be high. I'll try 0 0.025. Just to drop that, I'll try this one. All right, so that's where we actually had that. And if we wanted to start scattering this, we can just bring in the tile sampler. So I'll just do a tile, tile generator or tile sampler. And then we can set this to the pattern to pattern input. And then we can just drag this into the pattern input one. And here where we're connecting to the background input, I'll just select that and cut out that connection. And the reason why the rocks are super peaked is because we actually added the value for our normal. So let's get back here. And then for our scale, we set it to 2.1. We could just drag this down a little bit to 0.72. And we can actually have that scale and we can begin to do things on the tile sampler, like change the the size, for instance, we can set the size to a larger value. We can increase the scale of these. Now, what I can do is to also reduce the amount for X and Y. So I'll just get back up and do something like uh, 12 by 12. And we also need to play around with the variation very well. So I'll drag the size random just to have both random sides. Also, we have some slight random scales for the rocks. And also for our position, we'll drag our position random. We drag in our offset just to offset this object from both sides just to have some random properties like so. And let's keep going. Let's go also set our random rotation. 
we'll set this to a value of one. I think we also have the luminance random and that should be on the color just to give it some uh, map threshold. So mask random is going to, uh, we're going to be losing some of the rocks if we set this to mask random. So I'll just set it here. So some of those rocks won't be available right here. And for our blend mode color input. Right now I'm actually looking for the uh, luminance random, but it's okay if it's, uh, we could just use this to set the values for those rocks and let's check out our normals. I like using this uh, OpenGL because it's kind of like pushes it out. And I notice it's super uh, duper noisy. So let's still try to reduce some of those details from the slow blur. I'll try 0.014 here just to kill out some of those details from the slow blur. Yeah, I think it's not bad now. So basically we can always go back to each step and you know make changes here I'll try to scale to 51 <laughs> and we can actually have some very very weird stuff happening here so I'll set this back you know we can actually see what's happening we can create random variations All right so here we're actually doing something that looks like uh, some kind of uh, cave wall inside rocks Kind of, but I'll just set this back to three or four just to make this quite large. So basically that's how you can create some fun rocks using a variation of shapes. And we can always go back to those basic shapes and kind of like tweak them and rotate them around just to have some of those changes. Thank you very much for watching guys and I'll see you in the next quick tip.